वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट सो आई रिमेंडर कॉर हेयर आई विल स्टार्ट माई फोर्थ वीडियो लेक्चर सो द टॉपिक फ्रॉम चैप्टर नंबर नाइन इज प्लांट ब्रीडिंग फॉर इम्प्रूवड फूड क्वालिटी एज वी हैव स्टडेड एनिमल हजबेंड्री एंड डिफरेंट प्रोसीजर्स दैट हाउ द स्कीमेटिक स्टेप्स आर बींग परफॉर्म्ड इन प्लांट ब्रीडिंग वट इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव बिहाइंड इट we know that the population is increasing day by day and many people are hungry so to serve them they are eating the food but that is not a balanced diet how can we enrich their diet with good nutrients that can be carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals so scientists take out a technique known as bio fortification so on your page here is bio fortification so if i start let's first of all discuss what are the aims behind plant breeding so if i focus here you can see number first high yield we want to improve the quantity number second better quality of produce the produce can be any fruit it can be vegetables or it can be crops such as cereals pulses etc number third is increased tolerance to environmental stress we have studied lot many stresses in the previous videos it can be drought it can be floods salinity high exposure to light high exposure to temperature it can be high it can be low so we want those kind of crops which can grow under any critical extreme situations number fourth is resistance to pathogens pathogens are those microorganisms which cause infection either in plants or animals in case of plants there are several pests several insects and microorganisms such as bacteria fungus protozoans nematodes which cause reduction in the yield as well as the quality of the crops so we have studied several varieties and hybrids of crops by which we can make them resistant so that we should have to spray very less amount of fertilizers as well as insecticides and pesticides so last is also same increase tolerance to insect pest so this topic biofortification talks about how the hidden hunger could be stopped hidden hunger means those people who are eating food but that is not nutrient rich i'm repeating hidden hunger means that diet which lack adequate nutrients that can be micronutrient that can be proteins or vitamins because they don't have enough money to buy or afford these kind of nutrients in their diets so what can be done that we can increase the quality of protein oils vitamins in normal growing crops so particularly iron vitamin a iodine and zinc they are deficient in diet and they can lead to reduction in life span more prone to diseases that means immunity gets slow down and several kind of mental abilities can arise it can be dementia it can be depression so body gets more prone there is a more risk of infections in those people who are not taking balanced diet so let's start with our topic very interesting bio fortification so scientists or breeders we can say they have incorporated higher level of vitamins minerals proteins and healthier fats note down everyone healthier fats there are two kinds of fats saturated and unsaturated you are studying this in chemistry also that those fats which are healthier which can easily digested for in our body that is called as healthy fat now what are the objectives behind bio fortification here you can see it protein content and quality so 
from the starting we are talking only about quantity and quality so number first it is of protein number second oil number third vitamins it can be a b c d e and k number fourth is micronutrient now the term micronutrient means those nutrients which are required in trace amounts minute amounts and the mineral content so here the picture if we focus on this latest bio fortified crops in the market are number one cassava rich in pro vitamin a number two beans we will also discuss the type of beans further iron rich beans number third maize rich in pro vitamin a pearl millet rich in iron next sweet potato rich in pro vitamin a rice rich in zinc wheat rich in zinc you can also see that there are name of the countries written means from where these bio fortified crops are being made now let's come to this paragraph here they have talked about that in 2000 maize hybrids that had twice the amount of amino acids if we talk about that these proteins the proteins are only made up of amino acids amino acids such as lysine and tryptophan they are rich in maize all the corn crops they are rich in this lysine and tryptophan compared to the existing one so how in 2000 they are increased with biofortification if we come to brief of biofortification how it is done the genes of desirable quality they are taken out and they are incorporated and hybridization is performed if you remember the, all the steps of plant breeding all those are same number first was collection of variability germplasm collection was there then number second we will identify and we will select the parents only those parents with the desirable qualities number third was hybridization hybridization means mating crossing recombination number fourth step is testing why the testing is done so that we can check all the desired contents are there or not and last step is when the test is being done then we can release it we can commercialize it and everybody can buy it so let's come back we are here talking about bio fortified crops number first we have studied maize hybrids that are made rich in two amino acids lysine and tryptophan you have to learn the names of these amino acids number two is wheat variety the name is atlas 66 that is made rich with high protein content then iron fortified rice this is the number third put number three on this iron fortified rice we have also studied earlier in zinc as well as iron so they are made rich in rice so that is five times increase in the earlier consumed varieties here also you can see if i zoom this you can see so many crops are there which are being bio fortified next indian agricultural research institute new delhi it is also known as i a r i so you must know the abbreviation forms also it released number of crops that are bio fortified number first vitamin a enriched carrots we all know vitamin a is important for eyes so carrots they have made more enriched in vitamin a spinach you all know that is also with vitamin a pumpkin then comes bitter gourd they are they have incorporated with vitamin c bathua bathua is mostly used in sag preparation you can see here i took a picture of bathua so this is bathua Chinopodium is the name C H E N O P O D I U M. Chinopodium. Yes, so Bathua Chinopodium. So Chinopodium is a scientific name of Bathua, right? So in this also they have enriched vitamin C. Then is mustard, then tomato. Then they have talked that biofortified spinach and Bathua rich in iron and calcium has been made and last is most of the beans i am repeating most of the beans such as broad beans so here you can see a picture flat beans i have shown lab lab beans i have shown 
broad beans i have shown and garden peas all of you are familiar with garden peas the peas which we are eating so they are made protein rich so this was the topic of bio fortification now the next topic which we come to is single cell protein as the topic clear single cell means when the single cell is taken and that protein can be taken up as a diet it is much nutritious as compared to any other food single cell protein conventional agricultural production of cereals pulses vegetables fruits may not be able to meet the demand of food why because population is increasing that's why we have to shift from grains all the grains which we are eating either you are eating a dal pulses that is a grain cereals you are eating right so to meet diets also create more demand for cereal listen very carefully this is important and critical question right if we say we intake less grains and we turn our diet from vegetarian to non vegetarian we can reduce the consumption of the plants such as produces but this is not true why it is false because when we talk about poultry farming we need broilers for meat what we will feed them we need a meat but we have to feed them for grains so it takes 3 to 10 kg of grain to produce 1 kg of meat by animal farming instead of animal farming you can also write poultry farm so can you explain this statement in the light, light of your knowledge of food chains so answer is because those chicken those hen from which we are taking meat they are also depending upon grains that's why we can't go far from this condition that food chain is there either we eat vegetarian diet or non veg vegetarian diet ultimately we are dependent upon the plants that is grains so more than 25% of population is suffering from hunger and malnutrition so the solution could be single cell protein so what is it done inside this you can see here microorganisms are used for the production of single cell protein number first fungus number 2 yeast number 3 algae algae is very common because algae grows by its own spirulina is a very important microbe that grows by its own and it only requires very cheap raw material for its growth and last is bacteria so if the question arises in your mind here can we eat microorganism answer is yes not all but those which are selected ones which are acting as single cell protein so let's read in brief microbes are grown on an industrial scale why industrial scale what is the meaning of industrial scale industrial scale means at a large scale and it is used as nutrient rich food example is spirulina what are its advantages why we are talking about all these different technologies number first they are rich in proteins and low in fats you all know fats digestion is very difficult by our body so they are rich in proteins number second they can be easily grown as i already talked about they can grow on waste water now the question may comes in your mind that if we grow these kind of microbes on waste water do the toxins enter through the xylem answer is no the roots can select which minerals it has to absorb and which not all the toxins will remain in waste water and all the useful substances are taken and then the growth is done number second is animal manure so all are familiar with animal manure the excreta the dead and decaying matter of the animal waste last is molasses molasses is sugar cane raw material the left over part of the sugar cane from which sugar cane juice has been extracted all have seen na when we are drinking those sugar cane juice in summer season so the leftovers are called as molasses because they also are rich in diet microorganisms can grow with that also next is the use of waste water reduces pollution so water pollution will be reduced and they act as a supply of fertilizers as well as pesticides so this was the main of single cell protein now let's see it has been calculated that a 250 kg cow produces 200 g of protein per day means according to per unit it is less 
बट इन द सेम पीरियड वी कैन गेट मोर प्रोटीन्स फ्रॉम टू फिफ्टी ग्राम ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म सच एज मिथाइलोफाइलस मिथाइलोट्रॉफस मिथाइलोफाइलस इज जेनरिक नेम मिथाइलोट्रॉफस इज स्पीशीज नेम वाई बिकॉज इट्स बायोमास प्रोडक्शन इज मोर हैव यू सीन द पॉन्ड विच इज फुली कवर्ड बाई एलगी ऑन द टॉप सो इफ वी कैलकुलेट द बायोमास प्रोडक्शन ऑफ दीज माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म दैट इज ऑलवेज मोर सो इट कैन प्रोड्यूस ट्वेंटी फाइव टन्स ऑफ प्रोटीन सो इट इज अब फ्रॉम अवर इमेजिनेशन ऑल्सो सो दे हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट द मशरूम्स विच वी ईट एंड द लार्ज स्केल मशरूम कल्चर that is growing day by day and we are accepting it as a food is it is a fungus but it is not injurious to our health so now we come to the last topic of the chapter that is tissue culture if you see this picture plants are grown in the test tube in the laboratory if we are growing them what can be the advantages advantages can be we can maintain the environmental conditions we can give them proper nutrient medium then we can grow them at a large scale in a less time you can see the white color solution that is called as nutrient medium this is not only water because water may have few dissolved minerals but the for the growth of the plant it requires some thing that should be extra such as soil so here soil is not added in it if you remember in class 11 mineral nutrition chapter we have studied hydroponics it is similar to that but few variations are there hydroponics means growing plants without soil only with water but water should have some nutrient medium it is a mixture of different plant hormones if you remember we did auxins gibberellins cytokinins abscisic acid and ethylene hormone so this nutrient medium is rich with auxin cytokinin and gibberellin right but how it is grown so let's read it tissue culture is a technique that is started by scientists in 1950s and the whole plant could regenerate from x plant now what is x plant if you see this picture they have shown x plant is a small part of any food or any plant x plant a small part of a plant that can be put in a nutrient media it can grow growth means divide because these are the few cells only right so when those cells grow that is called as callus when that callus grows called as embryoid embryoid turn into embryo and embryo turns into plantlet if you can wonder that how can a small test tube gives rise to such a carrot they have shown here so it these are not the small test tubes they are bigger one so here only for reference in the picture it is shown right so if we talk about now schematically number first it is a technique of regeneration of whole plant from any part now here part can be a merry stem also part can be a leaf it can be stem it can be root it can be a bud also it should be grown in a suitable culture medium so i am repeating suitable culture medium means nutrient medium that should be containing some of the hormones plant hormones are also known as phytohormones so they should contain adequate amount of those minerals vitamins and hormones in vitro if you remember i have already told you in vitro means artificial because here manually we are doing it it is not a natural technique aseptic condition aseptic conditions means under hygienic conditions what are the advantages as we have already studied number of plants can be grown in a short period of time means quantity can be improved second is healthy disease free plant can be grown by merry stem culture this is also important part of this tissue culture technique let's see a plant is suffering from a disease can we grow a new plant from a suffering plant answer is yes 
now the question comes how can we grow it is suffering from a disease let's say a fungus has attacked any plant if we take a meristem you remember meristematic tissue apical meristem intercalary meristem and lateral meristem meristem is that tissue which is continuously growing but it is not a differentiated tissue it cannot perform any function it is only dividing so if we take a meristem of any infected plant also we can grow a disease free plant can we call it as a healthy plant answer is yes so tissue culture technique is very important if a plant is infected we can grow a new plant from it from its meristem last part is somatic hybridization so we will study it don't do not confuse let's talk about now few terms which are given here i hope you are clear with x plants any part of a plant it could be stem it can be leaf bud roots which can be grown in a test tube under sterile condition i'm repeating sterile condition means hygienic condition nowadays as virus has spread everywhere so each and everything is sanitized that is also called as sterile in special nutrient media now next term is totipotency the capacity any part can grow into a whole plant that capacity is called as totipotency now what has been added in the nutrient medium number 1 sucrose sucrose is what sugar sucrose is a rich in nutrients right what else has been added some inorganic salts vitamins amino acids growth regulators what are growth reg regulators phytohormones or plant hormones auxins cytokines etc etc means it can be gibberellins ethylene abscisic acid etc the method of producing thousands of plants through tissue culture is called micropropagation why called micro because we have used a small part of the plant to grow the whole plants do you think these plants will differ from their parent plants answer is no if you remember the asexual and sexual reproduction differences this technique is coming under sexual reproduction or asexual reproduction answer is asexual reproduction so soma clones will be there soma clones means clones clones means which are duplicates of the parents there are no variations at all which kind of food plants are coming under it which are being made by tissue culture tomato banana apple so they are commercially produced now we come to the second part that is meristem we have already talked about we can make virus free or disease free plants from any infected plant if we use meristem here it is termed apical and axillary so i have already talked apical meristem and lateral meristem so we can just take the meristem we can grow it in the test tube with suitable nutrient medium and a virus free plants can come so this technique has been cultured in banana sugarcane and potato last part of tissue culture technique is somatic hybridization if we talk about here can you see in this picture there are two cells which are taken what we will do we will take a protoplast if i here revise cell is covered by first of all cell wall then plasma membrane then what is present inside everything is called protoplast if i talk about in the center nucleus is there surrounded by cytoplasm but protoplast is cytoplasm plus nucleus means everything inside the plasma membrane is called as protoplast if we made the fusion of protoplast of two different cells it can lead to hybrid somatics this somatic hybrid can be grown into a new plant fine let's brief it out in this case somatic hybridization protoplast of two somatic cells we all know there are two kind of cells in the body somatic cells and germ cells yes somatic cells are those cells which are never participating in reproduction they have their own roles right 
so if any two somatic cells it can be leaf somatic cells it can be stem somatic cells if we fuse the protoplast of either same varieties or different varieties or different species also then it can lead to somatic hybrids step is first of all isolation of protoplast how can we isolate we have to break the cell wall cell wall can be broken by few enzyme reaction and protoplast can be taken out number second is fusion of protoplast it is again done in laboratory all the three techniques are done in laboratory only number third is growing those fused protoplast so that somatic hybrid can be made now one example is written pomato have you heard of it if potato protoplast and tomato protoplast is fused we can get pomato but there is no further intercorporation is there that we cannot commercially use it this technique is there but unfortunately it has not resulted desirefully it has not given us desirable results because if we say ethically maybe it is not true that we can take two different species and we can result into something else so here with this note i am completing this chapter so today we have studied bio fortification then tissue culture then meristem then last topic we have studied is somatic hybridization so after this you have the assignment to complete these ncert questions in the notebook so 12 questions are there many of these questions i have already given you when we have talked about the very first or second video lecture pdf document of important questions is attached with this last video you have to complete all those question answers in the fair notebook note down there are one mark two mark and three marks questions answers are also attached with them complete your notebooks and we will meet with the next chapter thank you